Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Our question for today comes from one of the channel patrons. His name is Circuit Mike, and here is his query. The ans this answers some questions I've had for a while. I've never put up any HF antennas, but it doesn't address the issue of strain relief. There's no way I can see that those copper wires won't work harden and snap off under the constant flexing and stress of a dangling wire of coax and exposure to wind. I wouldn't expect this to last more than a few months. Am I wrong about that? Uh, yes. Uh, maybe the fact that the wire is stranded helps? Yeah, that helps a little bit too. So let's uh, draw, uh, get this thing out here where we can draw a little bit on here. Okay, the question that Mike has is this. If you take cheap wire from Home Depot, THHN wire, uh, and you string it up between two trees. Okay. And you've got a wire strung like this, and you've got a coax connection, and the coax is coming down like that. Now, over at this end, you've got to take into account uh, the wind, which acts directly on the antenna. The wind which acts directly on the coax that's dangling out there, uh, and the wind as it affects the trees. So there's wind here which blows this tree back and forth, and wind over here which blows the tree back and forth. So unless this is on part of the trunk that simply does not move, um, and I would say that would be a little hard to do. Uh, if you want to get it up pretty high, you've got to get it up above the part of the trunk that moves. Um, you're going to have to put something in here to take into account the fact that the trunk moves. And I would suggest a big bungee cord. And you can put it on just one end, but I'd, I'd say go ahead and put it on both ends. The nice thing about the bungee cord is you never, if, if you never get into the situation where if you've got a weight right here and a pulley, there will be times when that wire is coming in faster than the weight can go down. And then when the wire hands back, it suddenly snaps on that pulley. It's a great way to break a wire. So that's why I recommend the bungee cord. Uh, yes, you can treat mass and spring constants as different reactive concepts, and I like the, the spring best because the spring usually will keep up with the wind and always keep some tautness on there, and that's what you want to keep. You don't want it to get to the point where it will break. So you get yourself a piece of bungee cord Okay, and you stretch it out as far as it will go. Okay, and you find the middle point, and you let it shrink back. So that little shrink back is the minimum, and then it will go this far out. Okay, if that's too little, put in more bungee cord. Uh, you can get real bungee cord at uh, a variety of places like uh, Sports Supply and stuff like that uh, where you can get uh, a million different kinds of bungee cord because they use it for bungee jumping. And so, of course, you've got uh, a lot of it and they can talk all about the spring constants and everything. Now, what will happen is this antenna is going to move. Nature is in motion all the time. And when that thing moves, uh, you're going to constantly be moving that wire. Now, his concern is if you take um, household wire. Now, I would recommend insulated wire for here. So this would be like a number uh, 14 or a number 12 uh, THHN, which is just normal house wire. 
It's soft copper. It is not hard copper. Hard copper has been pulled uh, to make it strong. By pulling on it, you strengthen it. Uh, you also make it a little bit more brittle. But the fact is that this thing should not have so much stress on it that you're at the breaking point anyway. You don't want to be there because the wind will blow the trees and there will come a time when the trees go opposite each other. It just will happen. Uh, the trees will go this way, they'll go that way, they'll go all kinds of different ways. If you do this with your dipole, you will be able to uh, have something that will be pretty stable. Now, the wire will stretch an inch or two uh, over a year or two. So you're going to have to retune that dipole from time to time. Um, you're not putting any real strength on the coax here. You may have a ballon there. One reason I don't like the ballon is they are a lot of weight in the middle. They'll pull the middle down quite a bit. I, I just usually connect the coax directly to the uh, connectors, as I showed in a recent video. So his concern is that the wire will stretch harder and become brittle and break. I've never seen that happen. I'm sure he has. Uh, Circuit Mike has. But uh, I've never seen that happen, and I've had antennas up for very long periods of time, and uh, they don't do that. Um, I would say, let's suppose it lasts you five years, and then it just breaks. Well, I would recommend if it breaks that you solder it back together, put it back up. You might have to retune it a little bit. If you shorten this side by six inches, then add six inches out here where you've rolled the coil back on itself, okay, so that you can keep it at the same length. Don't put so much tension on it that you pull it straight. Copper wire, um, soft copper wire is not meant for that. It does not need to be under tremendous tension. Now, if you were putting up an antenna for, say, the Army, you'd be using hard-drawn copper and uh, poles that don't move, and you'd be putting quite a bit of uh, strength on, the, on that to keep it from moving in the wind. But we don't need to do that in the amateur world. I would have it a little give so that it will dance a little bit around. Stranded wire will help because if there is a tiny crack in the stranded wire, the wires around it help. Okay, uh, if you've got a tiny crack in a piece of solid wire, it will uh, crack all the way through. Now, let's talk about hard and soft copper. Ideally, this is hard copper. Now, the advantage that gives you, really, not strength, but the advantage that that gives you is that um, you can stretch it tighter, if you need to stretch it tighter, and it's less likely to break in an ice storm or something like that. Uh, there are certain parts of the country where ice storms are a frequent uh, uh, fact and your antenna will catch ice and if it's not strong enough, will break. Now here's something interesting that was in a, a, a QST article oh, a year ago um, about how if you have a THHN hardwire whether it's uh, 12, 14, 16, uh, or uh, 6, or whatever, you can only pull it so tight, and it will break. And the amount of tightness is the same, regardless of the gauge of the wire. Think of each wire, the thick wire, being broken into a series of thin wires. They all have the same breakage point, whether it's a big cross section or a small cross section and don't pull this real hard because uh, copper wire as you know copper wire is intended THHN is intended for use in buildings and um, there's no strain on it at all it just sits it's it's tacked up 
it goes from uh, uh, device to device. It's just tacked there. There's no strain on it. Uh, and the wire is not designed to take strain. It will stretch a little bit, but I think if my experience is any matter here, that this will last for many years. Many years to come, you will get a great uh, performance out of that. Now, what will cause you to take down the antenna? Uh, the biggest and most important thing that will cause you to take down the antenna is because you want a new one. I would say the half-life of my antennas, uh, the ones that I put up for testing, is six months at the most. Um, when I put up an antenna that I intend to leave up, like the uh, Step IR, uh, Step IR, uh, Step IR, the vertical, it doesn't say here, Step IR, uh, Big IR, uh, is designed to be up Permanently, the uh, um, X-beam is designed to be up permanently. Now, that's still not so permanent that I may never move them. It's just designed to be that way. And they work fine. And they stay up. And even the cheap rope I use uh, holds them up. Now, the hex beam is held up by rope that I got from... Is it the rope guy or the wire guy? The wire guy, I think. I think I got it at Dayton. Um, and it was, uh, it's designed to withstand UV as well as be strong. And it is also designed not to stretch. Um, now you can get wire or you can get rope from Home Depot that is designed not to stretch, that will resist water, da 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 but they, none of those resist UV. So you end up, uh, the wire eventually goes bad in the UV. You need to get from, like from the wireman or other places like that, DX Engineering, get some rope that resists UV also. Uh, where we are at 7,000 feet here in the mountains, we've got a significant portion of the atmosphere below us. And so the UV is particularly strong here. And I've already seen my non-UV ropes have faded out quite a bit. So it happens. So there you go. There's your diagram. And I think this is going to work for you just fine. Uh, stranded wire, I suggest insulated. Um, I suggest just attaching the coax directly to the, uh, co to the feed point. Uh, bungee cords for uh, the wind resistance so you don't snap your wire because of the trees going in different directions. And not so tight, not so tight here. Give it a little bit of wiggle room because it will wiggle whether you want it to wiggle or not. And it is not terribly, terribly strong, but you can still pull it fairly straight. So there you have it. This is a book called Novel Antennas. It's a really nice book with beautiful pictures in it that I picked up at uh, Dayton. It's uh, made by uh, the Radio Society of Great Britain. I want to introduce a new feature of this channel. My study here, my room, is filled with books and gadgets I've accumulated from having this channel, and it's time to thin the herd, so to speak. I'm announcing my first giveaway to hams in the USA. Here's how the giveaway works. It's totally free to you. Send a postcard, QSL card, or simple one-page letter by snail mail to P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado 81432. On whatever you choose to send, make sure you include the giveaway number, which in this case is number one, your name, and call sign and shipping address. Please include your phone number in case I have questions. Please nothing else. Though you may want to send a picture of you and your station, and I may be able to show these during the live stream. Electronic submissions will not be accepted. The drawing will take place on the live stream held on Thursday evening US time on August 26th. 
note that uh, I pay the book shipping. So it's all totally free to you. I'll pay the shipping to ship it to you. Okay, somewhere in the U.S., anywhere in the U.S. Um, I hope to do something like this every month. Uh, note that after the drawing, all entries will be discarded and no information will be kept or transcribed. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom support and picking a way that you find most useful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. And until we next meet, 73.